My name is Dr. Wong Chen Xiong, one of the consultant infectious diseases physicians here at the National Center for Infectious Diseases. A person who's been infected with the COVID-19, usually there's an incubation period of up to 14 days. So for the first 14 days, they may not have any symptoms. After the development of symptoms, you know, the common ones that we see will include things like fever, cough, which can be a dry cough without any phlegm, runny nose, sore throat, uh, as well as tiredness and fatigue. In severe cases or serious cases, people may have shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, uh, as well as just you know, very severe sort of tiredness and fatigue. So we have heard reports, especially from overseas, coming of patients losing their sense of smell, what we call in medical terms anosmia. We have had a few patients here at NCID who've reported these symptoms as well. But as to how common it is, we don't really have a clear idea of that yet. So that's a great question because it's actually impossible for us to differentiate COVID-19 from the common flu or even influenza, especially in the early stages. The symptoms are very similar, you know, cough, runny nose, fever, muscle aches and lethargy. But I think the general message that we are giving to patients or people who are on stay-home notice is that as soon as you have any symptoms at all, to report these symptoms and to seek medical attention. So if previously you were well and now you've got a scratchy throat, a cough, a fever, any difficulty breathing whatsoever, seek medical attention as soon as possible. So we've learned quite a lot about the infectiousness of COVID-19. We now know that from the point of infection and the point of development of symptoms, the first week is really when viral levels are the highest in the uh, respiratory secretions. That means the secretions that come from the nose, the mouth, uh, when people cough or speak or, or, or um, you know, sneeze. Uh, after that, the amount of virus or the viral levels drop in the second week. So this means really that the first week is when people are most infectious. The first seven days when they've started developing symptoms. And hence, the message that's been going out, once you have any symptoms, seek medical attention. If you're given a stay-home notice or asked to stay home on medical certificate, just stay at home, avoid contact with people unnecessarily. I think the best way to deal with it is if you're living with someone is to maintain really good personal hygiene at home. Uh, for the person who's symptomatic, that means having those symptoms of cough, runny nose, to try and isolate themselves in their own room as much as possible. In shared spaces, just make sure that you practice really good hand hygiene, washing your hands frequently, not touching your face, especially your nose, your, your eyes and your mouth unnecessarily, and just avoiding sharing cutlery, sharing food, at least until whoever's unwell has been diagnosed, if they are negative, their symptoms are, 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 are over, they are no longer feeling unwell, that's really what we can do to sort of prevent infection. There have been reports, both internationally as well as um, in Singapore, of people who were tested positive but who didn't have symptoms, what we call asymptomatic infection. However, the numbers are really quite small. Uh, in our experience, at least in the local context, majority of people who were tested positive did have symptoms and, and hence, you know, we are more worried about symptomatic transmission. I mean, transmission from people who actually are displaying symptoms. Um, as to the whole issue of asymptomatic transmission, I don't think we know enough about it at this time to really be able to give a unified message about that. Uh, so I would say that, you know, the important strategy is just if people are having symptoms to try and get medical attention, get diagnosed as early as possible because uh, we think that the problem of asymptomatic transmission is probably not going to be that much of an issue. Well, I don't think it's going to be possible to avoid everyone who's just recently come home from travel. Uh, as we know, uh, most, if not everyone who's returning home uh, right now is going to be asked to stay, uh, serve a stay-home notice, so it, uh, the chances are we probably won't be coming into much contact with them anyway. Uh, in terms of protecting oneself from infection, once again, the best way is really to practice good hand hygiene, avoid touching your face, avoid crowded places as much as possible, practicing safe distancing, because truly and honestly, we'll never really know where people have been and whether they've recently come back from travel recently. Uh, as for people who've just returned home from travel, I think my message is stay home, serve out your 14 days, uh, be very, very aware of your own symptoms, seek medical attention as soon as possible if you're unwell, 
I think uh, with both sides of the coin in this way, it's, it's how we can keep ourselves safe. So some of the patients who have recovered so far have received um, antiviral medications. Uh, the one that's been used probably up to this point the most is a combination called lopinavir and ritonavir. So these are actually medications that come from a class known as protease inhibitors, which are traditionally used to treat people with HIV infection, but which we think has some activity against COVID-19 uh, coronavirus as well. Uh, at this point, this is probably the one that we have the most experience with. There are some other medications that are under investigation to see whether they've got any effect, uh, but the res it's really too early for us to tell whether they uh, will be effective for many people at this point. I think we have to be very conscious of the fact that we are only two months into the epidemic. So long-term follow-up, uh, we really don't know at this point because enough time just hasn't passed. Uh, we are continuing to follow up with patients who are recovered so that we know in the long term, even the middle term to long term, whether there are any long-lasting effects. So I think this is something that we'll have to watch this space to see. I think uh, as healthcare professionals, especially working in uh, the public sector, especially working at the National Centre for Infectious Diseases, uh, we knew that you know, this is what we signed up for. And uh, being on the front line and serving the nation in this way is something that you know, we, we, it's, it's our calling and it's in our blood. Of course, with the number of cases growing, people uh, have had to find ways to keep their spirits up, keep their mood up. I think there's a very strong uh, spirit of camaraderie within, within NCID where we know that you know, we are not in this alone. There have been messages from both ground up as well as from uh, levels of senior management, just messages of encouragement and trying to find ways in which, uh, you know, be it sending food around, be it sending out emails or cards with encouraging messages, uh, or something as practical as just making sure that the outbreak sectors, the wards and the clinics are staffed um, sufficiently. So I think all in all, you know, it's this soft, we are all in it together kind of spirit that's kept our, our, our general mood and, 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 and spirits up. Yeah. I think my message and my personal message is that these are sort of uncertain times and they're quite scary times as well. But uh, we've, we've gone through difficult times in the past before and we will get through this, but we can only get through this if we sort of go it together and do it together. I think that the messages that have been going out from the government, from the Ministry of Health, as well as from public institutions to keep people safe, uh, safe distancing, good hygiene, uh, being aware of one's own symptoms really need to be listened to. Uh, they may inconvenience us in the short term, but in the medium to long term, it's what's going to keep us safe and it's what's going to get us through it together. And I think just um, hunkering down, preparing for this to not go away overnight, but you know, with the long-term goal that you know, this will pass one day, and uh, it's about getting there together. So I think that's my, my message. Heed the instructions that, and, and the advice that's been going out so far, and uh, the end will be in sight. <laughs>